All right, let's see now. How can I introduce our next special guest? <laughs> yeah. He could simply walk out on stage and you would all know him. I could tell you that he hosts one of the most successful programs in radio history, but you already know that. I could say that his cable television show is among the best in ratings, but you probably know that too. But you may not know that he made his radio debut in Seattle at the age of 13 and he's now heard on more than 300 stations and on Sirius XM. He may not think much of a New York Times editorial board, yeah. and I'm sure they get irritated with him, but he has reached the pinnacle for authors as the New York Times number one bestseller twice for both fiction and nonfiction. He's a star of his own live stage show, and he's setting America on fire with his live tour. Gun owners couldn't have a better friend in the media. And you know who I'm talking about. I know you're excited to hear from him. You can't wait till I finally introduce him. So let's hear it. Please welcome a conservative voice of nature, our great friend, the man himself, Mr. Glenn Beck. Gun nuts! That's it. Um, those things piss me off. I just want to let you know that this is actually a DOJ sting operation. Boys, close the door. All the nuts are in one place. Damn right! Well, I, I want to talk to you first. I feel a little like Professor Harold Hill. I want to talk to you a little bit about the trouble that we're in. Because trouble is what we have. And I'm tired, quite honestly, of people not getting it. I'm tired of saying the same damn thing over and over again, and every day on my television show, I look at my cameramen, and they usually just don't listen. I mean, they listen to people talking about the news all day, and they usually don't even listen to anybody. And I started asking them, you guys getting it? The first day I was on the air, do you get it? Do you understand? They're like, I'm sorry, sir, what? If I can't get the cameramen to understand it, I can't get America to understand it. Now, here's the thing. The cameramen are saying to me, what the hell is wrong with people? How come they don't get this? <laughs> the reason why they don't get it is because they don't want to get it. Because things are tough. Every time, every time we say, why doesn't somebody just tell us the truth? Why won't somebody tell us the truth? And the politicians will tell you because, well, you're either too stupid, you won't understand it, or people will panic. Who the hell are we? We're Americans. We can handle the truth, we demand the truth, and we can understand the truth. So I want to give you a touch of the truth. Here it is. And don't look at this as just one piece, please. This is a 
tidal wave coming our way. Here we go. We have $109 trillion in unfunded liabilities. We have $13 trillion in debt. Now, how much currency is there in the entire world? If I take the peso, if I take the dollar, if I take the euro, if I take the currency from every country on planet Earth, take it all. How much? $17 trillion. $17 trillion. If I take every home, every business, every lick of land here in America, how much does that total? $50 trillion. Our debt is over twice the size of everything we own. You got it? They say you can't handle it. We just want more stuff. We want more stuff. We don't have any more stuff. We're not the, I am so tired of people saying we're the richest country in the nation. No, we're not. You know, if you live on a street and somebody's got a gigantic house and two Bentleys and a swimming pool and they got all the gadgets and you are sitting in a little teeny house, you've got an old beat up car, you have no gadgets, you don't have cable. This, this country right now would say, oh, look at, oh, look at the poor. Look at the rich. You know what? That guy loses his job. They take his house. They take his cars. He has nothing. He owns nothing. Those who don't have debt, you're the richest person on the block. Not him. That's an illusion. Let's be the richest people in the world again. Now, our spending is four times higher than it was a year ago. Four times higher. It is twice as high as what all the egghead experts predicted it would be. Twice as high than their worst case estimate. Healthcare, this new healthcare bill, it's already $115 billion more. On what? Are they buying a whole bunch of tongue dispensers? I mean, what, what, what have they purchased? I gotta tell you something. This stimulus bill, they said it was gonna keep jobs capped at 8%. It's already 10%. They're trying to tell us that they're creating jobs. You know what, gun lovers? You have nothing to worry about. This administration, I promise you, this administration is creating jobs, in fact, Every job they create is going to come with a gun. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a sour cream gun, but you'll have that and you'll be able to say, would you like a chalupa with that too, sir? And somebody, somebody will actually say, we got to take the sour cream guns away from these people. The founders never envisioned sour cream guns. Fannie and Freddie, as I stand before you today, I tell you right now, you keep your eye on the weasels at Fannie and Freddie. Mark my words, mark my words, everything that has happened is being funneled through Fannie and Freddie. You watch, you wait and see, and you stand guard. There is a fox in the hen house. So there's our financial situation, just the highlights. In Europe, a year ago, when I went on vacation, a year ago, last June, I held up a little blue book and I said, trouble is coming. This a little blue book comes from Europe. It's a coming insurrection. It lays out step by step. It shows how the labor unions and the communists can come together. And what their plan was, their plan over in Europe was to set it on fire. They said, now is the time. I asked people, it's one of the spookiest books I've ever read. 